So today we are going to speak about microcontrollers in C++. C++. Um, I guess we can start now. Uh, what is a mi microcontroller? Is It's uh, everything on one chip. So uh, a microcontroller has IO, uh, obviously CPU. It has uh, er, some RAM, uh, uh, dynamic memory, and a flash, uh, ROM, read-only memory. Some uh, microcontrollers have EEPROM. It's a special sort of memory that will allow you quickly store and restore settings. And every chip has a lot of peripherals uh, that uh, being a, a ways to communicate with uh, other devices. The whole purpose of a microcontroller is to communicate, I guess. So key properties. Uh, requires no extra components. Uh, yeah, microcontroller is self-sufficient. You can just plug it in and it will work. Uh, every microcontroller has onboard flash uh, and SRAM. Um, for your program uh, code and for like uh, for your heap and everything, uh, it has a lot of I/O. Uh, on average, it has like 100 pins to work with. Um, you know, it has internal peripherals. For example, it could be uh, uh, timers or, uh, for example, a watchdog. I can explain it later. Uh, they have a very small form factor. They are very cheap and uh, they are very low on power consumption. It's uh, like one uh, microcontroller can eat like 35 mi milliamps. That's nothing. Uh, and they are pretty much fast, fast nowadays. Uh, some microcontrollers go up to 400 megahertz with uh, cheap ones going up to 72. So you can uh, do a lot of uh, applications with this. Mm. So I'm going to start with uh, a disclaimer uh, that C++, but not really. Uh, histor historically, C is preferred over C++ on microcontrollers. From my experience, C++ tends to have bigger footprint, means uh, program uh, is bigger. And uh, uh, microcontrollers are very limited devices. Uh, C++ relies on heap more than C. Uh, sometimes heap is too expensive to even have one. Um, virtual methods, ex exceptions, and templates are too expensive too. Uh, and you are more, more often than not deal with a row of buffers anyway. So that's my reasoning for using C. But uh, as uh, Asterix says, it depends. Some people run uh, Python or even JavaScript on it, but uh, whatever whatever works for you. Uh, yeah, a lot of form factors. Um, there's like deep 40, uh, the one on the left, deep 8. For example, SOIC is a, a SMT. It's a surface mount uh, device, SMT, uh, which uh, you can use solder on iron to solder in, or you can use solder and heat gun. Uh, those tools are easily available. And if you would like to get started on this hobby, those two tools are pretty cheap to start with. And there's like super ex advanced uh, form factors like QFTP and BGA. Those are pretty hard to deal with, but uh, yeah, it should be easy to learn. <clears throat> uh, 8-bit versus 32-bit. Uh, so, depending on application, you might be fine with just 8 bits of bus. Uh, it's oftentimes cheaper, but 32 bits microcontrollers are typically faster, typically better in performance, and may be overkill for your application. Your application might be very easy, so you might be better off with 8 bit microcontroller. It depends. Uh, Harrod versus von Neyman. So, there is like uh, two major uh, architectures for organizing your code in the microcontroller. For example, IVR uses uh, Harvard, which is uh, instructions are stored in flash separately from your RAM, uh, while on uh, von Neyman, uh, typically everything is stored, uh, everything is mapped. So uh yeah your flash is still flash but uh, you you can run either flash or, or ram you can uh, uh, run 
um, your application if you, for example, generate it on, uh, on, on the fly and you can run it in this uh, architecture while AVR uh, kind of prohibits that. So it, uh, this could be a deal breaker. Uh, from here uh, on, the rest of this presentation will be on the 32-bit RAM from ST microcontrollers. As there are, lots, there are a lot of microcontrollers around, you can look them up. I'm not go, gonna cover FPGAs. Those are a completely different topic, so. So electrical essentials. Um, all you need is to basically connect a stable source of 3.3 uh, volts uh, to the microcontroller. You can uh, optionally add five capacitors with a uh, 0.1 microfarad uh, to smooth power consumption spikes. And that's it. You pretty much don't need anything. They are self-sustained. If you don't have a 3.3 volt source, you can pretty much convert any volt source you have to required by using LDOs or DC DC uh, converters. They are round and they are pretty cheap. Uh, electrical engineering, uh, software development for embedded systems, like a controller, comes hand in hand with development of hardware uh, through the means of electrical engineering. So often hardware designs dictate limits on software and vice versa. Um, the smallest piece of hardware is a PCB. Um, the process for PCB creation involves uh, creating schematics and layout design. Both topics are solved in special computer aided design tools, which are pretty much available. There are free ones and there are uh, the ones you can pay for, which one works for you. For example, uh, there's a free tool called SkyCAD in which you can design schematics for your uh, PCB. Uh, then you uh, create a layout for it, for it. And then you can even preview like live 3D, what's gonna look like. And you can import, uh, say, it, uh, 3D model into your uh, modeling card, so you can wrap a like a box around it or something like this. Entirely, entirely in computer, so no drawings or, or anything. Bootloaders. So, um, market controllers have a special feature called called boot, boot, bootloaders. So, essentially, bootloader. Loader is a program that runs before your program. Um, it's small in size and designed to do simple tasks like updating your software or checking it or whatever works for your application. You're free to override this bootloader. And uh, usually it's uh, uh, done on Arduino to, for example, update your um, application via USB. Uh, but uh, for example, on the 32-bit microcontroller from ST, it's usually done with a, with a special connection. Uh, there are several booting modes uh, depending on the special uh, boot pins. So every microcontroller for ST, from ST has uh, two boot pins and you either short it to ground or to VCC. And uh, depending on that, uh, you can boot either from flash memory or from bootloader. There is a, even a special case uh, allowing you to boot from SRAM, but I actually never tried that. So whatever works for you. Memory, huh? Uh, so there are a lot of ways to ma memory manage bo both flash and SRAM. Memory uh, sections, uh, SRAM and flash, are la layered in the linker, linker script. Uh, that way, Linker knows how many memory the chip has and where the RAM and where the flash is. Uh, usually, Linker produces those sections. It's a text one. Um, uh, it's a bi binary code for your application. Uh, it generates data one. It uh, contains initialized data. For example, you write a simple uh, line saying int a, static int a equals uh, one. So this one piece of information will be stored in point data, um, still in flash, but in uh, in visualization data. Later, when uh, doing startup, uh, startup script will copy over this uh, data section into RAM. So and your global variables, anything static, 
often initialized from uh, data. It's uh, stored in special sec section called BSS. Uh, for example, you define some st static structure. It will be defined in this section. Uh, RAM layout. So uh, typically RAM layout is this way. So first uh, comes the BSS section in the RAM um, where your static variables lie. Then goes um, heap. Depending on, uh, you might you might not even need one, but uh, yeah, uh, depending on uh, the heap size and stack size, uh, you can uh, you can define those, and uh, all they will do is uh, uh, prevent you from having BSS section to be too too big. The goal for this is uh, to uh, prevent overlap because heap is growing do down and stack is growing up. You can uh, overlap and your application it will crash, it will be undefined behavior. So yeah, the common way is to have no heap, no malloc, no new, no nothing. Everything is statically allocated, but uh, even there is only BSS section in stack. Many uh, libraries give you an option to either use heap or not to use heap. It uh, all depends for your application. Uh, interrupts. While rarely discussed on the regular PCs, uh, interrupts are very useful and popular way to implement even driver an application. Interrupt is a mechanism to stop currently execution routine to react in certain event, execute uh, interrupt service routine, and give back uh, the control. For example, uh, a, an event would be a partial push of a button. For example, you attached a button to an interrupt uh, service routine directly and you push it and it, it gets called. Um, yeah, there are external internal interrupts. For example, like it's a port status change, timers. Uh, for example, if you have some uh, transmission going, you can get interrupt when it's done. Uh, yeah, pretty much anything can interrupt you. Uh, interrupt vector table. So it's useful to know that uh, microcontrollers use interrupt vector table to map uh, those interrupt service routines to a certain interrupt event. Interrupt vector table for your project is usually defined through a special startup script, uh, which is done in assembly. Yeah, uh, and linker linker will override entries in the table when you define uh, corresponding interrupt routine. Yeah, but uh, the default implementation would be reset handler. And uh, for example, if you uh, somehow mess up this table and uh, end up with an entry without for example, you expect some interrupt, but you do not define this routine, then your microcontroller will reboot on the event. So you totally, uh, you don't want that. Just want to know that this table exists and how it works. Nested interrupt. So interrupts can indeed, indeed be nested uh, while one uh, service routine is being executed, another one could create a call, for example, uh, you, you do some, uh, so happens, you do some line separation while processing one interrupt routine and here comes another one, it, it's uh, of a bigger pr priority and you will get interrupted and this stuff is uh, pretty um, hard to deal with because it's all real time and you pretty much cannot use debugger. So you got to understand how this works, you got to define uh, priorities, right? And uh, yeah, because of those nested interrupts, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of tools rely on this. For example, there is a free real-time operation system, and it works because of this. It, uh, it uses virtual threads, even if a microcontroller is a single core. It uses uh, virtual threads using uh, nested interrupts. How do you like them for peripherals? So. Uh, uh, Ah, chances are pretty much any sensor or module you can find out there for your application supports one of these. So usual I/O um, pins. It's a it contains uh, it has UART, which is uh, typically two wires. Uh, SPI uh, master slave uh, master slave clock driving communication. There's a CAN or I2C. 
there's a special analog to the digital the toll converters and vice versa. Uh, some microcontrollers have DMA, direct memory access. I will talk about this later. Uh, external clock sources, for example, your micro microcontroller uh, of the box works on 72 megahertz, but if you attach a special um, clock source, um, quartz uh, oscillator, it uh, will resonate to uh, 400 megahertz, for example. Uh, USB, a microcontroller support USB natively, um, and uh, special connectors like JTAG or SWIM for debugging. Uh, timer I uh, said already, and for example, some microcontrollers might ha might have true random number generator uh, for your uh, crypt application, whatever. Uh, hardware abstraction layer. So um, on a ST, uh, there is a popular popular library that will uh, encapsulate um, hardware, uh, so you can. Uh, implement your application not tying up to a certain hardware you will write your application uh, using hal functions and uh, uh, instead of uh, calling and you can swap the chip to a different one or completely different one and you'll you'll need to do only minor changes um, hardware abstract abstraction layer will uh, encapsulate that for you direct memory access or dma um, Often one needs to push or read a lot of data off a peripheral. For example, uh, you're sending something to a network or you're reading some logs or uh, whatever. Uh, this task is very simple, but often it is a busy loop. It means that it takes the time for a transaction, but you can uh, use this uh, time on some more useful um, application. So yeah, so some microcontrollers have a way to offload the process with the DMA. So you just set up your transfer, and uh, if your microcontroller have the uh, channels to do this, uh, it will uh, do this uh, offline, so to speak, and uh, you will continue executing your main program while your chip will uh, do the dirty work for you. It will interrupt you when it's done, so you will uh, know when you can uh, process this. Uh, completed interruption. Yeah, it, it works at least and it's very useful. You can even do mem to mem, mem uh, DMA. What does, it, what does it mean? That means you can copy off one blob of uh, uh, information to another place and uh, continue executing. Don't waste time on copied stuff. For example, uh, DMA is configured in a circular buffer what does that mean? That means uh, that it will uh, read up uh, external peripheral into a buffer, but it will do it in a loop. I mean, it will read it, and when it's done, it will start over again, and you will get two interrupts, one in the middle and one at the end, and you'll have a chance to process half of the buffer in the corresponding interrupt. It's that way. You can have a I think processing of a continuous stream of data and you have chance to process this and then don't mess with main program because otherwise you would have to implement a busy loop and you will be stuck dealing with this uh, input and you won't be able to do anything else. Useful stuff. Um, I also want to talk about the tool called STM Cubimix. It's a special tool for ST microcontrollers in which you basically uh, create your microcontroller and define every pin and define every peripheral and it will generate uh, a piece of code for you to use and uh, the code is fine and you can use it in your project for example you decide to move uh, your UART from one place to another and you just redefine it in here and you regenerate the code and you will reuse it as this tool knows about how so uh, hardware abstraction layer will be used and you'll uh, you won't have to uh, actually look in, up into the data data sheets because it's uh, pretty painful sometimes because the data sheets are very long and uh, while hardware abstraction layer abstracts it out for you this tool uses so you can uh, create a piece of application in a 
minutes, I guess. IOs. So each pin can be configured as input or as an output, and you can uh, call them, uh, change their value with a simple function. Uh, it's called hell, GP or write pin or read pin. And uh, that's pretty much it about IO, I guess. UART. Uh, so, uh, for example, uh, you might have in your computer a, a, a special port uh, to connect to your modem or whatever. And uh, this is essentially the protocol. You configure the, the baud rate and you connect to another device. You just flip the RX and TX and you communicate it. You can do it manually uh, or using DMA. A lot of um, external uh, sensors or devices support this protocol, so you can uh, design your uh, application or tool uh, using this protocol. I do see. Um, it's like you are uh, two wires, but uh, everything is connected, and uh, you can have multiple uh, devices uh, attached to the same bus. The way to communicate is each device has a has an address. And you speak to it using this address. Uh, each device has its address hard coded in, and even some devices support uh, special pins you can uh, short to change the uh, address so you can have multiple same devices in the net, I guess. SPI, it's very popular. Um, it allows you to connect um, uh, some device to your microcontroller, and you don't have to synchronize the clock because you drive the clock. There's a special clock signal and uh, the slave device you connect it to will respect it and uh, whatever you transmit or the receive, it will respect. And uh, you can use, uh, you can do it both manually and with the DMA. <clears throat> USB, um, some devices have hardware support for USB and can be both a slave and a host. Implemented USB means uh, adhering to strict clock sender, meaning that you need an external clock source, uh, crystal oscillator. USB is a way too complex for this topic, so I'm giving this slide only. There is a library for HAL for this, and there are other solutions for this as well, uh, whatever works for you. You can uh, indeed use DMA to push bulk data, um, and now it has a lot of application, you name it like file storage, configuration, communication, file update. Uh, you can make it a mouse or whatever. <clears throat> Timers. So often there is a need to execute some very specific uh, future, some piece of code. And typical, typical applications are uh, PWM or pulse with uh, modulation, which will allow you to uh, essentially um, create voltage of required level, or there's uh, like servers, servos. Uh, in some machines, you can have servos, and those are uh, controlled by this PWM uh, cycle. And uh, with the timers, you can have uh, different protocol implementations, uh, anything that is uh, non-standard. For example, you have a TV remote, and you might, uh, you might want to use a timer to implement this protocol. Um, you can use timers to go to sleep to save energy, even if uh, your microcontroller consumes, uh, for example, 35 milliamps, it still could be a lot for your application. You, can, you may want to go sleep. And uh, yep, yeah, periodic updates. And uh, for example, uh, free RTOs is used, uh, uses timers a lot to Processes function. You can uh, look it up. The back tools. So uh, uh, you you have breakpoints. Uh, you can watch memory. Uh, you to do that you have to connect a special set of wires. Uh, I, I believe five wires. Um, sometimes uh, your device is too small or those wires already used up, so you cannot afford it. Um, the bug build is bigger than the release build, and uh, sometimes uh, the bug build does not fit to the your application, so you cannot use the bugging. Uh, important to know that uh, microcontrollers 
a limited amount of uh, hardware breakpoints. My one uses six, I believe. And uh, stopping inside of an uh, interrupter team may break your application. You can use a uh, plain old printf. Uh, yeah, oftentimes you need to debug some real time situation and stopping uh, since would break since. So uh, execution will go, will go slower, obviously, but uh, may, and may stop you from uh, catching a bug. And uh, sometimes uh, you cannot afford to even speed out logs. Yeah, it happens. Um, logical analyzers. Uh, you can indeed hook up them to a peripheral. For example, you have your device and it's attached to another device via uh, some protocol, being UART, I2C, uh, USB, whatever. And you just connect those uh, top, lo uh, top this communication with logical analyzer. It will read up uh, values, and it will even um, uh, split this uh, uh, values up to a protocol, and you will able to read values that being transferred. You can use it to debug. You can emulate emulate your microcontroller. Uh, there might be uh, an application for this. Um, you can try debug peripherals. Some peripherals uh, may be at fault, and good luck with figuring that out. Uh, you gotta read data sheets, and some protocols could allow execution, extracting uh, registers from those uh, peripherals. Uh, and you gotta try to isolate the problem as much as possible. And uh, the lastly, but not Lastly, you might have electrical issues. You might have uh, your wires messed up. You might have voltage or current ratings wrong. Uh, you gotta use multimeter to alleviate it. Uh, you can use a oscilloscope, and uh, you, your schematics might not work if you implement it in wrong. So you gotta you gotta try and simulate it in uh, some circuit simulation tools. For example, there's a tool called Proteus, which is you can try and run it in. Uh, yeah, I guess that would be it. Uh, any questions? I have a question. In C++, in C++ we have allocators and deallocators can we use for controllers or no, when we create programming controllers or we should allocate memory and add startup. I mean for dynamic memory. Uh, so yeah, a common way is to have no heap whatsoever. <coughs> uh, but uh, you can still use heap. You can still write your memory manager. As a uh, one caveat is memory is very small. You can have uh, typically like 20K of ROM. Uh, and uh, having a... Uh, uh, allocations might be too expensive, so you might not want to reuse memory or statically allocate a buffer and, and use it. But yeah, so uh, generally heap is uh, very expensive, so you gotta uh, pay what you do it for. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> create some allocators that will use our buffer <coughs> like heap. Uh, it's, I mean, like create proxy. Okay, and uh, which compilers do you use for controllers? Uh, um, I'm, I'm using ARMGCC. <clears throat> There's a special mic uh, compiler for my microcontroller. It's called ARMGCC AERB known. It's called like that. And uh, you can use it with uh, pretty much any IDE. You just uh, Google it and uh, install it and uh, it compiles on any operation systems and I install some microcontroller and it's just fine. I'm using CMake a lot, so um, it works very well with, with CMake. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Uh, is there any more questions? <clears throat> 